for me are a the abject failure of our society. I mean, it's mm -hmm. this is society wide mm -hmm. to deal with uh, this pandemic. Mm -hmm. And then the other one that is, I think, far more hopeful, but also interesting. And I know you've been tweeting a lot about this. Uh, is the the seemingly complete lack of awareness that the I mean, put aside the Republicans for a moment that the establishment Democrats have for what's happening in their own party. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And let's start with that, because over the past couple of weeks. Um, we had a major upset. I mean, I think like the the Elliott Engel thing cannot be overstated because, you know, Crowley, you could you could and they certainly tried to write it off as like. He had no idea what was coming and he got very cocky. And of course he was overconfident because how is this, you know, whatever, 20, 28 year old woman yeah. who's a bartender going to knock him off. And he just got, you know, flat footed. Yeah. Um, but angle should have been on notice. Yeah. Right. But they didn't buy it. They did yeah. not buy it. And then we also saw this stuff about like justice Democrats, they can't do anything. And, 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 you know, they're not, they're in like in year three or four of what they're doing essentially. Right. right. Um, and to get Bowman in there um, to get as close as they did with uh, Charles Booker. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, the, th these are big deals. It seems to me. Yeah. Um, now Hick and Looper, I feel like the progressive sort of didn't move quick enough on Romanoff. Right. And maybe, you know, in, in some respects, like, you know, if Romanoff had gotten the attention that Booker had, I think right. Booker, frankly, is a more interesting candidate to me. But yeah. I think Romanoff is good. But yeah. Romanoff probably has a better chance. Whoever wins that primary in Colorado has a better chance has, of actually being a senator. Exactly. And yeah. so, you know, the you know, the the progressive movement has to start, start to sort of like be able to make those calculations. Right. Like if well, we get Romanoff elected, he's going to be Senator, yeah. maybe not Booker, but Booker's more exciting. So how do you, you know, do that? But just talk a little bit about your, your sense of, of that whole dynamic. I think, uh, well, right. Um, the sort of triumphalism of, uh, democratic leaders like that, uh, justice Democrats will like, we, you know, we, we keep beating them over and over again. And of course that will continue forever. I mean, I don't know why they thought that would continue forever. Um, but now I think what we're, you know, what we're, we're seeing some sort of very obvious things happening, I think, which you're talking about, which is like coordination and candidate selection are very difficult. Those are like the two hardest things to do. Um, Democrats, I mean, and we, we use these terms, I think, loosely, but people mostly know what we're talking about when you say establishment Democrats. Um, their, their argument for themselves is that that's the thing that they're good at. And I, I think their track record on that is abysmal. <laughs> and, you know, that's sort of the, I think that's actually one of the main intra party debates that doesn't get aired in those terms often enough is that the argument for the DCCC types and the DSCC types is that we've been doing this a long time. We know how, how to identify the candidates. We know which races to focus on. And then, you know, they, their actual track record of getting people elected is OK. And then their track record once in office is not that impressive. And I think the Booker race was incredibly interesting to me because I do think that's one where he came very close and it, he might have done it if it weren't for the early voting. And that was just an example of like people were got exposed to this other alternative option because the way that the DSCC does it when they swoop in and, and anoint a candidate is like they don't want you to consider another option. That's unrealistic. But people were told, oh, you know what? You actually have a choice. And, you know, they seized it. And so I think that's that's sort of the the thing that will be crucial going forward is like figuring out when and where to to coordinate and and tr figuring out when to actually like get involved in these races. Do you, uh, from the perspective of progressives, because like I, you know, I, I can understand the Chuck Schumer. I mean, look, I think you and I, I think, are in some agreement here. Uh, we think Chuck Schumer is dim in some <laughs> respects. Yeah, and. Um, I, you know, my sense is he went in there and it was just about money. Yeah. Uh, essentially, he thought that um, he thought that Amy McGrath, a uh, a female vet, you know, could get money. And there I can't tell. And, and maybe these aren't mutually exclusive. I can't tell if they just don't understand what's happening in terms of, of, of what's going on in the country. Like the idea that Amy McGrath 
can beat Mitch McConnell is, well, I, you know, I hope she does. Right. But, but it's very hard to imagine that she can like yeah. the idea that like, like this sounds hackneyed, but she's just going up there and being like a, I don't know. She's saying that she's going to get along with Trump more than Mitch McConnell. Like, where is the, like, nobody believes that. Right. Like, you know, like, you know, it's not like, it's not like she's QAnon, which if she was, <laughs> maybe then she could, maybe she would McConnell. have actually. Yeah. But I don't know that, you know, Democrats should be promoting a QAnon person, right? but there's just no path for her. Right. And the, and to the extent that there is, it would be short lived. Um, uh, but I don't know if Chuck Schumer doesn't know that, or if Chuck Schumer is also thinking like, okay, She's got a 10% chance of winning. And if she does win, she's not going to be a problem for me. Right. Like, you know, like, I wonder how much of it is Chuck Schumer going like, the last thing I want is someone to the left of me representing yeah. Kentucky. Right. Because <laughs> honestly, because that's, like, that's going to force him to take all these positions he doesn't really want to take. How does Chuck Schumer justify any of his positions? Yeah. If the senator from Kentucky is to the left of him. Right. And, you know, we uh, uh, as we know, he defines himself internally as representing the exact median of the Democratic Senate caucus, like whether or not he actually does. That is his self-conception. He represents the median. And if that is what you think of as your job, yeah, you're going to you're going to not want that median to get pulled too far to the left, <laughs> especially right. if you're. Yeah. If you have if you have his political instincts. And if you're trying to sell that and you know that like, look, my donors need a certain amount of this and of that. And if I'm, if I'm telling everybody I'm the median, mm -hmm. it helps me to, to fulfill those donor requests. If the, you know, at least half the caucus is to the right of me. Yeah. And I think that's what Hickenlooper is all about. I, I mean, also think, I also think it's, it is, I mean, it is just a factor of, these people's political experience encompassing so many, 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 many years is that they have like for them, um, these sorts of business friendly, moderate Democrats in Republican leaning states are like not a distant memory. <laughs> right. <laughs> like they I mean, those like we, you know, in the last two decades, we have watched that type become nearly extinct. And I think that they just haven't there to them. It's like they haven't figured out another model. They just haven't figured out another model. So they're still just chasing after that. And where that I mean, where that gets a little sillier is a place like Colorado, where it's just sort of they're just an unwillingness to acknowledge where that state has become what that state has become. Right. But yeah, yeah. I mean, and, and, and I. I wonder if it's an unwillingness to recognize that or just or the, like, yeah, or just trying a, to keep things trying to hang yeah. on to it because yeah. that's the way they're situated. Um, and, and, and it's just a matter of, of getting them out of office. I mean, you know, uh, Wyden and Schumer introduced today uh, or yesterday, some automatic stabilizers, yeah. which remember uh, Nancy Pelosi refused to do because it would have made the numbers. Yeah. It would have been 4 trillion instead of 3 trillion. Yep. Like, I'm no. sorry. I mean, I get it. Four trillion is twenty five percent more than three trillion. But I mean, <laughs> can anybody conceive of these numbers anyways? No. Like it's exactly. not yeah. like from a political standpoint. And I think we also know from an economic standpoint, 